we started out with the assumption that we really need to understand what people were looking for. And I, one of the, the uh, sayings that we've used probably since the very beginning is, a building can't be any better than the information you gather to start with. That really means you have to understand what the people who are going to be ultimately using the building, both the owners and those who use it on a regular basis and those who uh, infrequently visit it, uh, what they're going to do, what their needs are, what their concerns are. Uh, uh, secondly, we started out at the very beginning believing that a building needs to fit in its environment, and that's, um, that's really significant. The idea of lower energy use, of, of use of natural uh, systems, daylighting, ventilation, and so forth, again, were, were from the very outset core to what we were trying to do. Then if you take that sort of high touch, the, the, the people side, the natural environment side, and use the tools of technology to, to really make things um, come together efficiently and effectively, uh, ultimately that, that synergism of systems, the natural systems and the technology systems, are really what have been the backbone of the development of the, of the firm since its inception. The idea of trying to develop the, uh, the advantages that you can gain from the technology systems uh, was one of the, the baselines that we came from. As, I, uh, as I've said, the idea that we start out with a system, our very first major system, uh, worked in three dimension. Our goal initially was to create buildings electronically, not drawings. And uh, as we uh, progressed through the years, many people thought we were absolutely insane because why would we spend all of this time creating this three-dimensional model? What we saw, though, was we're saving time and that ultimately as now the whole BIM, the building information model approach, is becoming sort of the fashion, we're actually kind of sitting back saying, well, you know, we've been saying that to you for a long time because it's only logical. And so the, the idea that firms who have not figured that out yet really, I think, are going to be left behind. But probably more importantly for, for me is the idea that it's just a lot more exciting because ultimately what you're doing is designing a building that you give to the contractor to build. And so that's, that's what we've been trying to get across is the paradigm shift that you're not drawing drawings of a building. You start at the very beginning designing a building in three dimension, which is the way you're supposed to do. And you know whether you build it as an electronic model or you build it as a physical model, but you're designing a building. And when you get through, the computer has put all the pieces together in a way that you can give it to the contractor and he can build it. And so right now, the idea that we sit down with a contractor with the subcontractors, with our engineers, with the client, all in the room at the same time, and we're able to design the building, and as we change a piece in the building, we're changing, in essence, the contract documents as we would have looked at them in the past, because it's just all part of the model, which then you can view. And so those who haven't figured that out are going to be scrambling really fast to catch up. Orcutt Winslow came to, to to select Archicad um, for a number of reasons. One, uh, there was always this belief that the, one of the most uh, difficult things to do is to, was to train employees to, to use software, and we, and we still believe that today. And Archicad was a, was a software that was easy to learn. It was intuitive. Archicad is about making architecture. I think that building information modeling is, is the wave of the future. And I think architecture can go one of two ways. Uh, if we're not careful, uh, we'll be squeezed out of the picture, and, and people, other people will use this technology to uh, put buildings together and, and, and forget about the design part of it. On the other hand, I think there's a huge opportunity for architecture if we do involve this. It will reinforce our position as the master of the, the, master of the ship, if you will, the, 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 the person who has the training to draw all these consultants together, and they get to be more and more of them. Uh, get, draw the, the more sophisticated client and the project manager and the builder all together and still manage the whole thing. Somebody's got to manage the whole thing and I still think it can be the architect but the architect has got to embrace this new uh, technology and, and capability to do that. Well, buildings are 
becoming more complex, uh, certainly, and and, um, and and now that 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 BIM has has sort of taken hold throughout the country, um, I think people don't realize it's not just about three-dimensional uh, imagery and and document coordination, which is one of the benefits of, of a building information model or a virtual building, but it's about the data. And when you have a, a building information model, you have access to just a tremendous amount of information beyond the information that it takes to create a set of construction documents. So, um, you know, and as we, as we start to use a model for more than just construction documents, as we start to realize that um, it's about, you know, trying to use the same data for shop drawings, uh, it's about um, uh, cost estimating and sharing information with contractors, collaborative design with, with owners, contractors, and subcontractors. That's where the real benefit of the uh, information model is when you have um, the ability to, to share and to, and to reach um, a more accurate cost estimate. Not getting on board with 3D uh, I think would be probably detrimental under, under any scenario. But contractors are starting to participate in the 3D for the purpose of being able to sell to owners the ability to, um, to find conflicts in the construction sequence or even to change the, the construction sequence so that trades aren't mobilizing multiple times and, and having a positive impact on the budget. But those who stay in 2D can't benefit from conflict detection, uh, which obviously has a benefit to the owner in reducing change orders, reducing overall project cost, um, not to mention the fact that code analysis uh, software is, is already here. Municipalities will be reviewing three-dimensional models for, for code compliance and uh, the ability for a, a, a virtual building model to be analyzed for uh, energy. Uh, that technology already exists today and so you're leaving behind a lot of potential benefits if you, if you choose to go the 2D route. Well both ARCHICAD and, and MAC have been, been good to us throughout the years and have about I guess 15 years of that relationship. So, well, we're encouraged that that most universities are are pushing 3D modeling of some sort. Um, of course, we like to see more of them use ARCHICAD, but uh, um, we're finding more and more new employees at least understand um, how to design buildings in, in three dimensions with some software, and um, and that's absolutely critical to. Um, you know, hiring people at Orcutt Winslow where we do everything three-dimensionally um, and we're trying to describe models in, in, in really finite detail. I think architect students have to have a lot of passion that, or, or they don't graduate, they don't get through it, they go do something else. So, uh, the, I th and I think the passion is creating things. The, the, you know, there's a lot of different creative areas. There's, there's, uh, there's art, of course, and there's graphics and there's a lot of different cre creative fields. But I think architecture is the one that you really get to see what's, you know, what you create built. And not only is it something you can look at, but it's something you use. Every week is, is sort of new challenges and new ideas and, and new things. And I think the next 25 to 30 years are going to be the most exciting time in the, in the profession of architecture. So for me, the idea of, um, of being able to start right now, uh, there's a lot of competition. Uh, it takes a bit of technology to actually sort of get up to speed and, and it, you can't start out with just a T-square and a pencil, which uh, we were able to do. But the, the potentials are unbelievable in my mind. And, and what it takes is just self-confidence. Um, I think if you, if you actually believe in yourself and, you, um, and you're comfortable with people, and you're really able to connect with people, uh, you can do it today as easily as you could before. In fact, maybe it's easier because with technology you can do so much more now than you were able to do you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago.